Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, would you please rise? Gentlemen, remove your caps. On July 30th, 2023, the MNU football team at the university lost a teammate and close friend in the passing of Mizell Law. We would like to have a moment of silence as we honor and celebrate the impact Mizell made at MNU. Thank you. Please remain standing for the opening invocation led by MNU success coach and football chaplain Lee Waldron, followed by the singing of our national anthem by Brooklyn Hunt, a sophomore youth and family ministry major from Spring Hill, Kansas. Let's pray. Dearly Father, we come before you and offer our worship tonight in the stands and on the field. We ask for your provision over the athletes as they give their best in word and action. Be with the officials, the fans, as we support with integrity and sportsmanship. May we honor you in all things, Lord. Amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Olathe District Activity Center. We are ready for kickoff as the visiting Grandview University comes into Olathe, Kansas to take on your Mid-American Nazarene University Pioneers. We are ready to kick off another home season here in Olathe. If you can believe it, it feels like we were just here. MNU did play last week. They were on the road, came away with an overtime victory. So the Pioneers come into today 1-0. Their opponents for today, the number three ranked Grandview, they are still 0-0 as they've not played, but they have high expectations for this season. From everything we know, warranted expectations. So I apologize if you're just getting in here. We had a little technical difficulty. You know, first game of the season, that stuff will happen. But I think we're all here and ready to go now. Pioneers, kick off and we're underway. Kickoff field at the three-yard line. Here comes Grandview. Angling up the left side, has space at the 20, 25. Now up to the 30 and knocked out of bounds around the 32-yard line. That's where the offense for Grandview will take over. Ball returned to the Vikings by number two, Gates Avery. We're still having a heck of a time up here. But somehow we're going to make this work. This stuff is going to work, I say. 
There we go. Maybe. Grandview University, first and ten from the 31-yard line. All right, so here we go. Third ball plays at the 31-yard line, first and ten. If you see the stream here, Grandview out here in all white. White helmets, white shirt, white bottoms. Empty backfield. They're going to drop back. Flings it left. Caught. And finally brought to the ground around the 35-yard line. So starting off with a completion, getting about half the way at the field. Four, gain of four yards on that play. Wearing Jackson's pass is complete to number four, Street Damon. So Wearing Jackson, the junior quarterback, 6'3", 214, out of, Inc uh, let's see, Inconee, Iowa. Second and six. This time he's going to start under center. There was a false start. Tight end. Jumped a little early, so that's going to push Grandview back. The Vikings taking a step back after that game. A couple pats on the helmet. Mistakes will be made, especially on your first game. Will Cox and Nate, senior tight end. So with that now, second and 11 coming up. Last year, the Pioneers played on the road up in Iowa against Grandview. Score was not pretty. In Grandview last year, ran the table, had an undefeated regular season. Didn't lose until the playoffs. Dropping back now out into the flat. They have their running back. And he's able to get a little more than I thought. I thought the Pioneers might have him buttoned up behind the line, but he's able to get to the sideline. Jackson's, let's see, that was two. What was that two? Gates Avery. There we go. So we're, we're up in the shade here in the box, looking down on a very bright field right now. It's a hot day down here in Olathe, Kansas. Game time temperature started at 95, a little bit of a breeze. Thankfully, low humidity, but you know down on that field, that AstroTurf, it is going to be warmly. Third and two now facing the Vikings offense. Pioneers are bringing a lot of men forward on the line. They're going to drop back. Three-step drop, scrambles. Quarterback angling, angling right. Went for a pass. His receiver had to leave his feet. No completion. Out of bounds it goes. That's going to bring up fourth and two. And after a little bit of a hesitation step, the offense is going to head off of the field for the Vikings. And special teams checks in on both sides. Good snap on the punt. Angling right, angling right. Ooh, a little bit of that rugby-style kick. Short, hits somebody. It's going to take a heck of a bounce, and it's going to go out of bounds now. And the ball's going to be placed for the Pioneers around the 17-yard line. The ball took a funny hop. I thought it might have hit a player on the way down, but nobody made a move that it did on either side. A friendly bounce for the Vikings special team, and now the Pioneers with their first offensive possession. So now we have Parsons under center. Had a good game last week. Man in motion going all the way across the field. They're going to sling it out wide to the right. Trying to make a defender's miss. Now gang tackled with about a five-yard gain. So the Pioneers one for one early on. Adrian Parsons' pass is complete to Arlandis Mitchell. Second and two. So Mitchell with the completion. The Pioneers quickly to the line. Going with a little bit of a no-hole right now. Now they're going to hand off a little handoff left side. Ball came out, but the uh, officials blowing the whistle. They're going to signal he was down before the ball came out. So Cherry able to get the first down. So first down, Pioneers. And that's good for a Pioneer first down. Parsons now on an empty backfield. He's got four receivers to his right, one to his left. Now a man's going to come in motion. Coming to join him on the left side. Now stops in the backfield. This is Cherry. Parsons with it. Fakes the handoff. Tipped at the line. Ball in the air. And it's going to fall to the turf. The defensive end for the Vikings was able to get a big paw on that. Knocked it straight up in the air. But down it falls. Incompletion. Parsons pass is broken up at the line of scrimmage. By number 11, Gabriel Jenkin Duffy. So Jenkin Duffy. Credited yeah. for that batted pass. Second and ten faces the Pioneer offense. Another man in motion. They're going to take the sweep. Now hands it up the middle. 
and able to fall forward is the running back for the Pioneers. It's going to be a minimal gain. Maybe I think they're going to give him two on that. That's going to bring up third and long for this Pioneer offense in trying to keep their opening drive alive. Cherry again with the carry. Pioneers in a little bit of a pistol formation. Parsons going to drop back. Blitz coming, and he's nailed. Parsons didn't even have time. Ball comes out, but it's going to be blown dead again. Fortunate for the Pioneers, but Parsons taken down by two Vikings on that play. Sack, and that is going to bring a quick end to this drive after that loss. Fourth down, and the punting unit coming onto the field for the Pioneers. So Grant Pella, punter for MNU. He is back. There's three men protecting him. The Vikings look like they're going to try and bring the house on this. High snap. Ooh, Vikings were close. Punters away. Signal for the fair catch. Now he's going to let it wrap, bounce, and what a bounce this is for the Pioneers. Ball touches down at the 35 and is rolling down to the 16. So for the special teams of the Pioneers, you couldn't ask for anything better. If you want to get real picky, the snap was a little high. But that's it. After that, we're golden. So the ball will be placed at the 20. The Vikings now with their second chance on offense. And play ready to resume. Another quick pass to the sideline. Pioneers have one man miss. Spin. And now taken down about halfway to the first down marker. This was complete to Street Damon. I'm sorry, Damon Street. Damon Street. And now a player down for the Pioneers. Some are going to have to keep in mind. Again, this is a very hot day down there. Now, this certainly does not look like cramping, but like calf cramps, leg cramps, that could definitely be an issue on a day like today. There we go, the Pioneer player able to get back to his feet. Definitely showing a limp on this, or at the moment. So who knows, maybe it is something as simple as a cramp. Here's hoping. Again, leaving the player right now, th or the field right now, this is Anthony Sow. He was player injured, so not being helped off the field, just walking with the trainers and coaches right now. It's a good sign. This is going to bring up second and five. Ball on the 25-yard line for the Viking offense. Play ready to resume. The uh, play is being changed at the line. Looks like a stretch play left. Indeed it is. Makes a couple people miss. First down for the Vikings. Able to drag the defender forward. And this is going to be a first down and a little bit more. Ball taken down. Nine-yard gain to the 34-yard line. Pritchard credited with the tackle. First and ten for the Vikings from the 34-yard line. Quickly up to the line. Pioneer defense wasn't completely set yet, so now they're going to play action. Rolls out, hits the tight end, tight end. Boy, he's a uh, more than I think we tackled him. I think he tripped. Tripped over the 40-yard line. Down he goes. Falls to the 41. So Wilcoxon able to come up with. What do you get? Seven yards on that first down play. Second and three coming up. Now this time the Vikings changing the pace. They're in no hurry. Long huddle now bringing it up to the line. So Pioneers have to be ready for this. It looks like the Vikings like to change the tempo. 
often might try and run up there and surprise them at some point in time. Pioneers have two men on the left and only one defender there. Bennett down at the line. And that's going to be an incomplete pass. <laughs> I think everyone was kind of standing around waiting for an official to blow his whistle. Never did. That was definitely a batted pass and an incomplete pass. So the wide receiver for Grandview wisely, he just kicks the ball out of bounds. Like, well, I don't know what's happening, and the whistle's not blowing, so let's get this off the field. Makes sense to me. Third and three. Pioneers looking for a big stop. We're able to hold on third and two on the opening drive. See if they have the same luck again. Eight in the box. Look like they're going to bring the house. Player rolling out, rolling left. Has a man downfield and caught. What a catch. I thought he had overthrown his target, but no. Beautiful catch made along the left sideline. And this is Street again. So Damon Street with a heck of a catch. Double covered, able to get half a step ahead. That was enough. Like I said, I thought that pass was overthrown. He's able to reach up, elevate, and bring it in. So first trip into Pioneer territory for the Vikings. Let's see now, first and 10, ball on the 32-yard line. Empty backfield now. Dropping back. Seven-step drop. Th throws it into the ground. Throws it at the feet of his, oh, I'm sorry, at the foot of his receiver. Yet nothing had developed into the play quickly. The Pioneers were coming. And the quarterback winds, wisely just grounds the ball. In case you hadn't noticed, it's my first game of the season, too, and I can't talk today, apparently. No the so the officials decide to clarify a fish, or a uh, Receiver in the area. Boy, I can't talk. So no intentional grounding, which, yeah, we all kind of knew that. Back in the shotgun now. Wide snap. Running play. Off to the right. And the running back still on his feet. He's going to have enough for a first down. A lot of misdirection being showed by this Viking offense. And this was enough for a first down and more. Carried on the play by number 23, Tyler Fitzhu. So Tyler Bitsum with the first down carry. Ball on the 19-yard line. The Vikings threatening in the red zone now. First and 10 for the 19-yard line. Running back in the backfield. Quarterback under center. Three to his right. Stretch play right. Bitsum again. Gets hit at the line. Falls forward. I think they're going to give him maybe four on this carry. The ball carrier. Tackle recorded by number nine. Jacob Tett. Jacob Tett with the tackle on that play. Gain of four on the play, second and six from the 15-yard line. There you go. They gave him four. Second and six coming up. Other than the false start, pretty clean here in the first quarter. Time just ticking away. Empty backfield for the Vikings. Now they're going to pull up. Looks to the sideline for a play. Pioneers fans trying to get noisy here on this second and six. Drops back, looking right, now looking to scramble, able to escape the pocket, looking to throw again. Still has that ball tucked, though, and now taken down. He's going to fall forward and be credited with a yard. So this is not a sack on the play. Jackson wearing the ball carrier. But the Pioneer is able to limit the damage as he had a lot of room on the left side, just could not quite get around the edge. Third and four. Pioneers again looking for a big stop, seeing if they can't hold him to a field goal attempt. Ball is on the 13-yard line. Empty backfield again. Three on the right. Two on the left. They're going to pull up and look to their bench again. Looks like the quarterback is changing the play at the line. Snaps. Throws. Has a man short. Breaks a tackle. Falls forward. And it's going to be down at the five-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down. So with five yards to go, a fresh set of downs await the Vikings. When the pass was completed, it was right at the sticks. It's going to be really hard to say if that was going to be a first down or not. But he was able to elude the tackler, fall forward, and come up with the first. So, okay, ball officially placed at the six. And that is where it is first and goal for the Pioneer defense and the Viking offense. One running back in the backfield. They're going to snap. They're going to fake it. Play action. 
Quarterback out rolling, 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 looking for a man. Now he's going to tuck and try and get to the end zone. He is hit at the line. What is the signal? And they signal touchdown. There was a big collision right at the goal line. And they're going to say that he was able to get across. And so Grandview jumps out to the early lead here in the first quarter with 5.51 remaining. Now the defender for the Pioneers is down. Again, like I said, big collision at the line. So the medical staff again for MNU heading out. Moving his arm around. So this could be shoulder injury. That's going to be my guess. Again, far side of the field, very far from me. So I'll keep my guessing limited. Okay, with the injury taken care of, yeah, it's in the process of getting taken care of. Hopefully you guys can still see this on YouTube. We're having a heck of a time pulling it up here in the booth. All right, here we go. Extra point attempt. The kick is up on the way. And the kick is good. So with that, Grandview jumps out to lead 7-0 here in the first quarter. Point after attempt from number 95, Nathan Hamilton, is good. With five minutes and 51 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play, the score is 7-0 in favor of the Vikings of Grandview University. That's a heck of a Wi-Fi password they just sent me. Like I said, we've been having issues. Oh, there we go. The OPS 233. And special teams for Grandview back out on the field. All right, fans, get on your feet and make some noise for the kickoff. And here's the run up to the ball and kicked away. Ball's going to be high, a little short, fielded at the 10. Here come the Pioneers. Return angling to the right, comes back left into the pile he goes and down near the 20-yard line. Too bad they couldn't come up with a difficult password. Yeah, <laughs> As our producer here trying to not lose his mind, getting everything hooked up and connected and ready to go. Good luck with that. First and ten. There we go. I kind of like it when things start working. Pass from Parsons. Has him along the left sideline. Now we're going to have a flag on the play. This is going to be in the area of holding, so everyone hold your excitement as this might be coming back. The official having a word. And everyone starts walking backwards, so this is not good for the Pioneers. Ah, ineligible man downfield. So one of the linemen ventured just a little too far out on that pass play. So that gain negated. Second and four, or I'm sorry, second and fifteen now for the Pioneer offense. Parsons has it, dropping back, pressured, steps up in the pocket, has his man out of the backfield. This is Cherry. Cherry at the original first down marker and knocked down. Actually, may not have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Close, but not quite there yet. Complete to number zero, 
Sean Cherry. Tackle recorded by number 33, Kate Sheedy. And number 20, Prince Brown. Now here's a run off the left side. Not, again, not quite to the first down marker. Cherry looked like he stumbled a little bit coming around the offensive line. Didn't quite make the first down marker. Oh, no. I lied. He did just pass it. They are going to go ahead and move the chains. Favorable spot. The officials now are having a word. Maybe those chains did move a little early. Indeed, they did. Okay. I thought it was short. They're going to mark it or march them backwards. The chain gang got a little excited. There you go. It's now third down for the Pioneers. Third and one. Parsons takes a snap. They're going to hand it off left side. A lot of traffic. Cherry, he's able to break through. Has enough for the first down. Beats it by three yards. Now we can go ahead and move the chains. First down, Pioneers. Able to keep this drive alive. Here with 420 remaining in the first quarter. This time that's good for a first Parsons now is going to fake the handoff, dropping back pressure. It has to roll, coming back to the other side. Has a lot of room on the right, throws it out into the flat. Has a man able to get about halfway there. Now taken down by many a Viking with about a four to five yard gain. Parsons passes complete to number 17, Robert Minifee. So Minifee able to come up with his first completion of the day. Going to bring up second and six. Nate Ewell. Pioneers with the ball at the 43 yard line. Still trying to get into Viking territory for the first time today. Parsons fakes the hands off, throws it. Did that bounce? Ooh, it's on the other side of the field. I couldn't tell. It looked like that ball bounced in. Indeed, officials are going to confer that that did bounce into the receiver. So an incomplete pass. Going to bring up third and six now for the Pioneer offense. I do see in the YouTube room, I can see all the chats in there. Yeah, I know the that sun and the uniforms and part of the shadow, like it, it doesn't look like the greatest picture quality ever. But again, the, the lighting here is kind of getting to us. As soon as that sun sets, it's going to be a lot clearer once we're under the lights for the evening. Parsons fakes a handoff, dropping back, looking left, lofts a pass, has a man, first down right at the 50-yard line. That was a beautiful touch pass by Parsons. Gets it over the defender and right into the arms of Mitchell, who has the first down. Pioneers now still no huddle into Viking territory. Fake the handoff, sling it out into the flat. Oh, not going to be able to escape this time. Knocked down for no gain. Parsons pass is complete to number seven, Miles Himes. Let's see, it was Himes with that completion. Himes is going to head off to the head off the field right now. Oh, no, maybe he's not. Fooled me. Pioneers now are going to go with three here on the left side. One wide receiver out on the right. We'll stretch play left. They hand it off. Knocked down. That's going to be a big loss by the Pioneers. Defensive line for the Vikings. They were all over that play. Pioneers are going to lose. Oh, they're only going to say they lost two. That is uh, it's fortunate. So Cameron Finley. Knocked down. Pioneers remaining in Viking territory, but only by a yard. Parsons has it. Dropping back. Good protection this time. Steps forward in the pocket. Has a man. Caught. First down and more. Bumped out of bounds around the 30-yard line. Taken down by two Vikings. But well done by the Pioneers to come up with that completion. That into the waiting hands of E.J. Rogers, who was able to catch, turn forward, and get some extra yards. Yeah. 
Pioneers throwing a lot of balls to the left side. Unfortunately, if you throw a ball to the right, they're going to be looking right into the sun, trying to come up with that completion. Parsons now steps forward, has a lot of room, trying to make a man miss, now slides down, taken down at the 25-yard line. Again, went for the give-up slide, contact with the defender, but everything on the up and up on that. The defender was already well in the act of trying to come up with that tackle. Parsons, the bunk carrier, tackle made by so a carry by Parsons. Seven yards on the play, second and three. We have one minute remaining here in the first quarter. Yep, we're good over here. The fake it to Finley, dropping back. Parsons over in the middle. Oh, boy, dangerous pass almost taken away by the Viking defense. He's trying to get it into the end zone, but two Vikings were there. Tipped away, knocked to the turf. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm sorry. Looks like our live feed is down. Live feed is down. Parsons drops back again, steps forward, hit from behind and taken down. That's going to be a sack by the Viking defense. Parsons able to make the first man miss, but not the second. Danny goes, going to bring up fourth down. Fourth and eight for the Pioneers. The Pioneers are just going to let the first quarter come to an end. So we're going to flip the field before coming up with this decision here on fourth and eight. The offense had not yet left the field. Now they're all going to go to the sideline, and we'll see who steps out of the huddle here on the other side of the first quarter break. What the call is. Wow. 15 yard personal foul, hands to the face. So this is going to send the Vikings way backwards here on this third and 12. And if my math are correct, we come to third and 27 possibly coming up. As far as I can see, we are still not live on YouTube. Double check me. I, I've been wrong before. Here we go. For, yeah, third and 27. Empty backfield. Dropping back. Pressured. Thrown over the middle. Has a man open. Pioneers just trying to limit the damage here. Knocks him out at the original line of scrimmage. So there's definitely no field goal range on that. That's going to be fourth and ten. Now facing the Vikings. Their special teams are inching onto the field. Now here they come. They looked a little unsure if they were going to actually head there or not. Was there. And so third and 13 after that fumbled snap.
Pioneers would love to get them back in another like third and 27 or just stop them here on third and 13. Tight end split out wide. They're running back. He leaves the backfield. Pioneers not ever going to be able to bring Ladie. Oh, whoa, whoa. Whistle. Play is stopped. Blown dead. Timeout called by the Vikings. So this came from the bench as the players were snapping the ball. Coach on the Grandview sideline did not like what he saw. And so called the timeout. They're going to try and get this figured out and try again. If you broadcast a game and there's no one there to hear it, did you really broadcast it? <laughs> Our poor feed, only 29 minutes long and it died. But thankfully the MNU cheer squad able to keep everyone company. So this is just proof that you should be at the games rather than trying to listen to me. Third and 13, ball on the 30-yard line. Vikings have proved that they can move. They, may, they are able to chew up big chunks of yards. Pioneers are going to send a man up the middle. And this overthrown by a lot. Thank goodness, because that receiver had the Pioneer defender beat. But well out of reach of everyone, and here comes the special teams punt unit for the Vikings. With fourth and 13, they are going to punt, or at least appear to punt. I don't ever buy punts anymore. Too many people have bought into, you know, hey, let's fake it a lot. It works once, and then they fall in love with it, so I don't trust this at all. But I'm just a skeptical person like that. Lined up, good snap, low snap, actually, and sent away. Good punt. My goodness, this will be returnable, though. Chase back to the 20, able to get... There we go. There's the block in the back call. You know, unfortunate for the Pioneers. But they start. Let's see where they're going to place this ball. Oh, boy. They moved them way back from where the foul happened. The Pioneers now are going to be placed on the 10-yard line. The 10-yard line is where the offense is going to take over. So they have a long way to go, and they have six minutes and three seconds in which to do it. They want to get some points on the board before halftime. Parsons in the shotgun. Has a lot to his right. They're going to hand it off going to the left. And Finley not able to get around the edge. He's tripped up, knocked down for a gain of two. Cameron Finley, the ball carrier, tackle mate by number 32. Pioneers <laughs> all covering their eyes and helmets trying to look at their bench, looking directly into the sun right now. Down. Clock's still ticking, so the Pioneers might just try and keep this on the ground. Nope, we're going to drop back, pass. Has a man. Ooh, dangerous pass almost taken away by the Viking defense. Finley out in the flat. Had that pass taken away. Knocked to the ground, fortunately for the Pioneers, that that wasn't an interception. A player injured, so they're going to call a timeout. Nobody's on the ground. Oh, nope, there he is. Defensive lineman for the Vikings. Receiving attention from the 
trainer is now being helped up to his feet pretty quick. So he's going to come off of an, under his own power. And actually didn't even go to the trainer's table. He's right back in the defensive huddle. Yeah, he's going to head off. Got to get that last minute coaching before you get to the trainer's table. Third and seven. So third and seven facing the Pioneer offense. Again, a punt from here gives Grandview great field position before the end of the half. Parsons drops back. Pressure coming. He stays in the pocket. Rolls right. Being chased. Throws on the run. Flag on the play. Completed pass for the first down, but this flag is going to mean a lot. And, yeah, they're already telling everyone to come backwards. This looks like it's probably going to be a hold. Rogers with a great completion. Parsons, good job keeping the play alive. But holding on the Pioneer offensive line is going to negate that play. So this, let's see what's this going to be. Half the distance to the goal. Still third down. It's going to be third and what do we got? Third About down. 14. Third and 14, ball on the six-yard line. Again, a non-first down here makes matters even worse for the special teams unit of the Pioneers. Blitz coming, Parsons. Pump fake, hit of the line, and swallowed immediately. This is actually going to be a loss of one on the play. This is going to bring up fourth and 15 from the five-yard line. Boy, you do not want to be that punter with your heels on the back of the goal line. He's going to have to try and get this away and not get this thing blocked. Not a, not a lot of space to work with. Fourth and 15. Good snap. Sent away, but a low line drive. And it's going to bounce, bounce, bounce. Roll, roll, roll. Didn't even make it to midfield. But that's as good as you can get for the Pioneers right there. Ball on the 47-yard line. That's where the Viking offense is going to take over. Starting already in Pioneer territory on the 47. So the Vikings have a glorious opportunity to put some more points on the board before the end of the half. With 4.25 remaining, only 47 yards to go. They were given a heck of a chance here. See if they can capitalize on it. Still pretty sure I'm talking to no one. <laughs> Are we at least recording this game? Oh, good. At least it's being recorded. Here's a run left side. Ooh. There was some contact for a gain of two. This was Avery Gates, the running back. Boy, he... Uh, he was looking for somebody to hit on that play. From up here, Gates seems pretty tall, but he's only listed at 5'8". Carries that 5'8", well. So the ball at the 45-yard line. Quarterback standing on the 50, takes a snap. Now they're going to give it a handoff on the left side. A lot of space. Oh, flag comes in late. Pioneers seem to think this is going to be on the Vikings. And yes, indeed it is. This is on the Vikings. See what this call is. Holding down the field, I do believe. A good run was had by Avery Gates. Let's see if that's taken all the way off the board. What are we going to do here? Okay, so a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. And again, that was already past the first down marker. This will walk them back. Not going to be a first down. Ultimately, this play ends with a gain of one. It's a ball on the 44-yard line. So third and seven. Now for the Vikings, who have an empty backfield. They've got all the receivers on the right side. So the Pioneers definitely need to look left. Nope, they're going to run right. And boy... 
They're going to run this right down the Pioneers' throats right now. Avery Gates again. He is the first down and a lot more. As Gates has found some giddy up here in the second quarter. Gates is going to come off the field, though. Took a little bit of a breather. Again, they've got time. Three minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the second quarter as we're ticking towards halftime. Vikings, I'm sure, want the touchdown. They're pretty close to field goal range as it is. So barring a turnover, they look like they will at least have an attempt for some points. They're going to run it again off the right side. Pioneer defensive line is there. This is going to be a one-yard gain. It's going to bring up second and nine. Pioneer D was there. Vikings definitely have not gone in any kind of a hurry up yet with 2.30 left. They're still huddling up. Not showing a, a lot of urgency. Quarterback under center. Running back in the backfield. Again, they just seem as though they're going to keep running. They do. Right side. Hit. Falls forward. They're going to have more than, more than a few on this one. Going to bring up third and manageable. Carson. A little personnel change for the Pioneers. Pioneers still with all three of their timeouts here in the first half. They haven't used any. Only one off the board for Grandview. They've got third and four coming up. Now they're going to try and spread things out. They've got three on the left, two on the right. Now a timeout called, I believe, by the Pioneer defense. Yep. Pioneer defense looked all disjointed. Discombobulated even, if you will. So they use their first time out of the half. Stop the clock with 1.39 remaining. Vikings within striking distance. But again, 7 nothing right now here as we head towards halftime. So here at halftime, we will step away for a few and we'll come back again if this is only recording. You can just fast forward, you know, 10 minutes. We'll come back and bring you the first half stats before we get started with third quarter action. Just to keep everyone updated. Not a barn burner by uh, any stretch of the imagination for either side. So stats will be pretty easy to rattle through. And Grandview, rank number three. Undefeated in the regular season last year. So high expectations for them. Third down. Here we go. Third and four. Empty backfield. Quarterback in the shotgun. Takes a snap. Drops back. Pressure comes. Flings it right. Has a man. And is that a catch? Indeed it is. They're going to say that was a catch right along the sideline. Ball at the 10-yard line. First down for the Vikings. And the receiver had to get way low to come up with that. His pass is complete, number four, Damon Street. So Street credited with the catch. Clock's still moving. Vikings not at all in a hurry. I think they would like to walk this into the end zone with no time remaining. And now this is going to be blown dead. This was Avery Gates. He was trying to work the sweep here, working from right to left, had the ball in his hands, and the play was blown dead. Imagine this has to be a false start if they stop the play. Three officials having a discussion at the 13-yard line. One official leaves. The other leaves. Here, let's get the call. And there we go, another false start by the offense. Again, something they'll be ironing out, I'm sure, in the film room this week. First game jitters. Ball placed at the 15-yard line. 107 remaining. First and goal from the 15-yard line. 
Identical look coming out of this huddle. Three receivers to the left, two to the right, empty backfield. Watch the design quarterback keeper. Three-step drop, and he tucks and goes. Boy, called that one. On his way to the corner, contact made, and no signal. I haven't seen anyone call a touchdown. Looked to me like he got in unless he was knocked out before the goal line. So wearing with the carry, but I don't I think he was denied the end zone. And so credit to the offensive linemen. Again, I'm old, so this stuff I notice. Who were all signaling for their bench to get back. Yeah, I know they wanted to celebrate. There was a big hit at the goal line, a pioneer is down. But Waring didn't make it into the end zone. So running over defender to score the touchdown. The bench wanted to run and celebrate, but the entire offensive line all signaled them to get back. That's that's heads up. That's smart, good leadership. I dig it. Again, I'm old. I look at stuff like that. Pioneer defender is still down. He is outside the out-of-bounds marker of the end zone. So all the way across the field, I can't tell you who that is. Again, huge collision at the goal line as Waring and the defender were uh, coming together. And I do believe this is – oh, this is Anthony Sow again. I was told there's number 10. This is his second in, second time being down and injured. So must be playing through some pain today. And so they're going to continue to check on him. The clock has stopped with one minute remaining here in the second quarter. So we're almost to halftime. Training staff all on the far side of the field with Anthony Sal. Vikings all huddled up on the field at the 20-yard line. So we're going to have second and goal from the one-yard line, I believe, coming up. Now they get Sal up to his feet, but he is going to be helped off this time. And is not going to be walking off under his own power, it doesn't look like. Lower body injury, to be sure. And they're actually going to take him around the field. He's not even going to come across. But yep, de definitely something been affecting him today. Again, the ball is placed. I mean, the nose of the ball is almost on the goal line. So with a minute left, you got to imagine this is probably just going to be a little uh, take the snap and hop over the line, kind of a quarterback keeper. Or he might turn and hand it to the running back, just let him power it through. Again, the Pioneers have not been able to stop Avery Gates very well thus far today. So you can either power it through with Gates or just keep it with the QB and hit over the line. And sound just slowly coming around. There we go. They, they have Sal far enough away. It looks like play is ready to resume as he's brought around the field. We'll see. Both sides are ready to go. The Vikings in their huddle. And then the Pioneer defense just kind of hovering over the ball. I think they're going to wait until Sal's out of the back of the end zone before they get this thing going again. Wouldn't be good for a play to carry out of the back of the end zone and run him over. So he's definitely favoring that right leg. All right, here we go. The official's finally heading back into place, I do believe. And we're just waiting on the head official. Here we go. Vikings now head to the line. Goal line stand for the Pioneers. And the quarterback keeper, he just goes right of his center. It looks like he goes right into the end zone. Indeed, he does. And that is going to be a touchdown for the Vikings with 54 seconds remaining before the half. So as we discussed during the, the little pause there, they really only had two options on that, as close as they were. The design quarterback keeper is a good one. And that's what they went with Jackson Waring. Seems big and strong enough. He kept hold of it. And he's listed at 6'3", 214. So that's a good-sized quarterback right there. 
Good snap, good placement. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So with the extra point, with 54 seconds remaining, it is Grandview 14, and the Pioneers nothing as we are heading towards halftime. Both, time, uh, both squads still have two timeouts remaining here in this half. We'll see if they elect to use any or if everyone's just kind of ready to get into the tunnel, into the locker room. Sun is setting here in Olathe. Got to like evening games. Lights are already turning on and getting warmed up, so we'll be under the lights starting the second half. Doesn't feel like it. Right now it's 89 degrees, but we are getting into, well, I mean, football season, fall. So it's still a little warm right now, but pretty soon we're going to wish we had this weather. But the sun is setting earlier, so like I said, second half of this game is going to be under the lights here on a beautiful Saturday night in Olathe, Kansas. I want to thank everyone for joining us here on the Pioneer Sports Network. Sorry we've been having so many technical difficulties. By the time you hear this, you might just be hearing it on the recording, so you're not going to be able to send me wonderful, loving, glowing messages in the YouTube chat room. Hopefully you guys will come back for our next home game where we should have things ironed out. Because we've been having fun with the YouTube over the last few years. We have fun questions that we ask. Here's a bounce into the end zone. And that's going to be a touchback. Cody Krushwitz. Kick bounces out the back of the end zone for a touchback. So that was a good kick. Not much of a factor tonight with the wind. Lucky if you could call it a light breeze out there. So thankfully with the sun going down, it should cool off a little bit for the players. As when I got here, that field level was hot. Spicy. Muy caliente. And the officials right now having a hard time getting this going. Uh, everyone's like, wait, that was a touchback. Why are we putting the ball in the 20? That goes on the 25, good sir. <laughs> so the officials correct the placement of the ball. Ball on the 25-yard line. First and 10, Pioneers ready to get this thing going. Parsons takes it. Low snap. Able to handle it. Pressure coming. Escape somehow gets tripped up. Now taken down. Tell you, he got sandwiched but was able to run away from it. Defensive lineman, though, stuck with him. Got his arm out there as he dove and was able to trip up Parsons. Loss of five on the play. Well, only four. Second and 14 coming up. Clock still ticking down to 30 seconds. Looks like both sides are willing and able to get this just to the locker room. Drops back again. Throws over the middle. High pass, but caught. Completion made. Ball down at the 17-yard line. I do believe a timeout called now. Menifee with the catch. And, yes, timeout called by the Pioneers with that nice completion. They want to at least, you know, have a look at it since they had two timeouts. Can't roll the timeouts over to the next half, so you might as well use them now. Seventeen seconds to go, first down, and one timeout remaining. Pioneers, I'm sure, would love, love to get some kind of points on the board. They're going to have to dial up something good, though. They're giving them a long time out. There we go. Now they're heading back out. Parsons right now is 11 for 17. Only 86 yards through the air, though. He's been sacked four times. So Parsons hopefully can dial one up here in the last moments. Second quarter. Oh, off his back foot. Lofts it in the air. Incompleted. Pioneers have it. They're going to need to get down and use their last time out. And indeed they do. Still out of field goal range, but the ball was caught. Rumbling forward to about the 34-yard line. See where they put this down.
Heck of a throw, great catch. That by Miles Himes. Timeout MNU with nine seconds remaining. Parsons, he was hit as he threw and threw off his back foot. I thought that ball was toast. I was very happy to have been wrong. Himes was able to get underneath it, turned it upfield. Ball on the 33, first and 10, nine seconds remaining. Pioneers can maybe get something at the sideline and step out of bounds. They'd have a chance at a field goal. Any points are good. Maybe this is a little something to build on for the second half. Pioneers moving the ball. Here we go, Parsons all alone in the backfield. Two receivers on each side. Now Cherry in motion is going to stand to Parsons left in the backfield. Going to stand and protect, fake the handoff. Out in the flat, throws off his back foot again. Out of bounds it goes. Couldn't get the sideline, three seconds remaining. And what are we sending out? Oh, we're going to try. Whoa, this is going to be a long field goal attempt. Pioneers wanting to get something on the board, though, with three seconds remaining. Spot of the ball where it will be kicked is the 45-yard line, and then 10 yards to the back of the end zone. 55-yard attempt, roughly. Good snap, good placement, kick is blocked. Not able to advance with the Pioneers, and that's going to do it for this half of football. Again, the only way you're going to get the ball that far, it has to be a low line drive. Vikings defense knew it. They were able to elevate and knock that down at the line. And with that, we have got a 14 to nothing game here at the half. We're going to set the clock for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, everyone, and come back and join us. We'll have all the first half stats, and we'll get going with second half action. So we will see you here in 20 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field the 2023 back-to-back -back NAIA World Series MNU Pioneer Baseball Team. Last spring, MNU Baseball followed up its first ever trip to the 2022 NAIA World Series.
Series with an even better finish at the 2023 NAIA World Series. The program earned a trip to the National Tournament with a runner-up finish in the Heart of America Conference Baseball Tournament. They then went on to defeat the number two team in the country twice to win the LSU Shreveport opening round, advancing to the program's second ever NAIA World Series. The following individuals earned postseason honors. First team all-conference, Noah Castillo, first base. Second team all-conference, Javi Melendez, third base. And Zach Trevino, pitcher. Honorable mention all-conference, Tyler Frieders, pitcher. Dio Cornett, second base. Bryson Sherwood, shortstop. The following individuals also earned NAIA Scholar Athlete Honors. Henry Hawthorne, Mason Hunter, and Joshua Martinez. Emmanuel received the Musco Sportsmanship Award for the conference. And Ryan Thompson was named the Region Coach of the Year. Other postseason honors also went to Bryson Sherwood, who was named the 2023 NAI World Series Gold Glove at shortstop and was named the 2023 NAI World Series Overall Gold Glove. Please join me in giving this group a round of applause on all their accomplishments this past season. Welcome to the field, the Holton Wildcat Marching Band from Holton, Kansas. The Wildcat Marching Band is under the direction of Mr. Jamie Malson and is led onto the field by head drum major Carter Mirpole and assistant drum majors Madison Hicks and Braden Geisen. This year's competition marching show is titled Dance Dance Revolution and includes Dancing Queen by Abba. Just Dance by Lady Gaga and Gangnam Style by Sock. The Wildcat Marching Band is a regular participant of the Capital City Marching Festival at Washburn University, the Holton Invitational Marching Festival, and last year placed seventh overall at the Kansas Bandmasters Association Small Schools Marching Band Competition. We would like to thank Dr. Luke Johnson, Brandon Fossa, and Mid American Asbury University for the opportunity to perform here today. Now let's dance. Let's give a round of applause to the Holton High School Wildcat Marching Band.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Holton High School Wildcat Marching Band.
All right, everybody, welcome back. For those joining us on the Heart Network, your score right now is Grandview 14, Mid American Nazarene University 0. We are ready to kick off third quarter action here in Olathe, Kansas, home of the Pioneers. Just real quick, wearing the quarterback for Grandview. He is 9 for 15, 102 yards. His longest completion was 27. Over on the other side, Adrian Parsons, the Pioneer quarterback. He is 12 for 19 with 113 yards. 27 yard is his long as well. Been sacked four times, worth noting. Actually, I think it might be more than that now. We've been experiencing technical difficulties here, so I'm giving you our stats. Hopefully they're accurate. We shall see. Here's another kickoff well into the end zone as the kicker for Grandview is putting a boot into him today. Pioneers are having a real rough time on the ground right now as they only have 14 rushing yards in the first half. 95 over for Grandview when they played each other last year. And again, a very lopsided game. The rushing yards were hugely different, shall we say. The Vikings... Had a very potent run offense last year. Pioneers have already played one game this year. They're 1-0 after beating Langston last week. This is the first bit of action for the Grandview Vikings. Made a flag on the play. Let's see what's happening here. So there was actually offsides on that opening kick. We are going to re-kick after the penalty. So... Both offense and defense can go ahead and head back to the sideline. Special teams, you get one more try at it. And our first attempt was a touchback. We're going to do this all over again. Avery Gates, the running back for Grandview. He has four attempts. He's gained 35 yards, as long as being 14. And over on the other side for the Pioneers, Cherry is four attempts for 19 yards. I mean, he's the only one... Well, one of the few with positive yardage, so. Again, the run game not going well for the Pioneers. They have had better luck through the air, but again, you're trailing 14-0 here starting the third quarter. The sun is finally set. We are under the lights here in Olathe. Let's do this again. And the kick is underway. This is a high kick. This will be shorter, playable, maybe not. Boy, drifting backwards. Fielded right at the goal line. Pioneers are going to try and return. And down they go, probably 18-yard line. Nope, the 19. And that is where the Pioneers are going to start this third quarter. Grandview able to come down with one touchdown in the first quarter, one touchdown in the second quarter. Pioneers have a chance late, but their drive stalled out right before halftime, so not able to get anything onto the board. Official choosing the hash mark that he would like. And now we're ready to go. Parsons is going to start with two wide receivers to his left, one to his right. Cherry's in the backfield with him. Man goes in motion, going around the entire formation. Fake the handoff in the middle. They sling it out wide quickly. These quick passes not fooling the Grandview defense. That was a solid hit and very minimal gain. And E.J. Rogers probably wishing we don't do that one again. Second and five. Now they're going to hand it off. Ooh, trying to stop and change directions, but that's not going to work out well. Now knocked down in the backfield. That's going to be a loss of yards on this run attempt for the Pioneers. Jerry tried to make a quick move, and his foot slipped out on him. So taken down behind the line. Now third and nine coming up for the Pioneer offense. Pioneers going no huddle so far today. They have not huddled up, I don't think, once. Parsons has it. Dropping back. Pressure comes. Steps forward. He is wrapped up. Can he get away? No, he cannot. Yet another sack on the play. And as I said at the top of the third quarter here, Parsons, he has been put down on his backside several times today. Fifth sack that I can think of. I actually think it's more. Try and keep mental track of those as we go along. Go along. So for the second time today, the punter for the Pioneers is going to be standing in his own end zone, hoping to get this away cleanly. Grandview looks like they're going to bring the house. Here they come. And he's able to get it away. Good kick. Got it to the 51. 
And there are flags down. The punter was put on his backside. I do believe this is going to be running into the punter or roughing the punter. We will see what the official says, but this might give the offense for the Pioneers new life. We await the official's call. He's checking with the Pioneers. And this is going to... I think this is going to put the offense back on the field for the Pioneers. Let's see here. Okay, so this was not roughing. This was only running into the kicker, which is a five-yard penalty after the end of the run. So that was not what the Pioneers were really hoping for, let's be honest. They wanted roughing to keep the ball, but... The defense comes out for the Pioneers. Offense for Grandview. And this will be the first possession of the third quarter for the Vikings. Jackson Waring under center for Grandview. He's been having a good day. He's got two to his right, one to his left. Running back in the backfield with him. And they're going to hand it off and keep it on the ground. Able to get the left edge and more. First down and more. This again, Avery Gates. Avery Gates, who has had a big day so far. And I imagine here in the second half of this game, they are just going to try and ride Avery Gates to the finish line. So big run there. A ball placed at the 30-yard line. Already the Vikings heading deeper into Pioneer territory. Gates remains in the backfield. Pioneers showing blitz. Now they back off. They're going to give it to Gates again. This time he's hitting the backfield, able to scamper away, but only for a step. Gets it back to the original line of scrimmage. And a towel flies into the air. It's not yellow, so it doesn't matter. So no gain on that play. Second and ten. Definitely slowing the tempo, rightfully so, are the Vikings, except this is an empty backfield. Watch the quarterback keeper. He's going to drop back, see if he tucks and runs. Still looking, nope, flings it over the middle and incomplete. He split two receivers, had two receivers in the same area. Think somebody might have zigged when they should have zagged. So to avoid running into each other, they both pull up short, and that pass falls incomplete. So third and ten, ball on the 30. Pioneers, I'm sure, would love get a stop here and get the ball back. And I know you're saying, thank you, Captain Obvious. If you're a Pioneer fan, that is what we would like. See if we can make it happen here. Empty backfield again. Tight end is in on this play. Will Coxon, he's had a bit of a day. Design keeper, dancing, and taken down for a small gain. I think they're going to give him, what, maybe one or two. And it is fourth down. So Waring tried to keep it. I do believe he actually wanted to throw on that, but couldn't find anyone. Tried to tuck it at that point. It was too late. Fourth down. And here comes the field goal unit. First field goal attempt for the Vikings. Let's see here. This looking at maybe a 45, 46-yarder somewhere in there. Good placement. Kicks on the way. Ooh, plenty of leg. Splits the uprights, and it's good. Boy, that was dialing from long distance right there. And that will extend the Viking lead. It is now 17-0 with 11-13 remaining in the third quarter. Heck of a kick right there. That was – there was still plenty of air underneath that ball when it crossed the upright. Great crowd out, crowd out here for him and you today. Like, it's been a long time since I've seen this place so packed. So a lot of people here for the home opener. And then credit to the folks from Grandview. They travel well. I'm sure you can see them on the 
other side of the field opposite of the camera. That's pretty good. Pretty good for traveling fans. So well done by both schools. Well represented today. Temperature's cooling off a little bit down now. We're down to 85 degrees outside. Low humidity, little breeze. So still not quite football weather as we'd like it a little cooler, but players have got to be feeling a lot better now that that sun has gone down. See if some of the temperature on the field can drop. That AstroTurf holds it in there. Pioneer special team is back. They are w waiting, ready to take this kickoff. And here it comes, another high booming kick. This from the same one who just knocked through that very long field goal. So their kicking game is solid over there for the folks at Grandview. So with the touchback, ball will be placed at the 25-yard line, first and 10 for the Pioneer offense. Parsons looking to get this offense moving again. Again, there was a little flicker, a little sign of life towards the end of the first half as the Pioneers had a bit of a good drive going. It stalled out, but there was some hope. Now the opening drive of the third quarter, not so much. That was squashed pretty quickly. See what this drive holds. Man in motion, around the formation. Parsons has it, pumps fakes left. Now going, going with a little pump and going, intercepted. No, he dropped it, he dropped it. The safety for Grandview came over and it was in his hands, but he could not hold on. So the Pioneers fortunate that that was a drop. E.J. E. Rogers was the intended target, and he never had it. The safety was the only one with a shot at that ball. Second to ten, man in motion. They're going to hand it to him. Has the edge and a blocker. Takes it outside, now knocked down. The Pioneers able to get about halfway there to the first down marker. This was Kolb with his carry, and he's a wide receiver, so this was a sweep. And he lines up, maybe to do it again. Third and four, Pioneers trying to keep the drive going. Parsons, two-step drop over the middle, has his man, reaches out and able to collect. Wow, difficult catch. But this will be enough for the Pioneer first down. So he was able to hit the tight end on that play. So this is Peyton Faden. Yeah, not listed as a tight end, huh? Listed as a wide receiver. He sure built like a tight end. Big guy. Again, that's all I can see from up here. I feel like I'm a mile away up in this booth. Kolb in motion again. Fake the handoff to him. For the sweep. They give it to Cherry up the middle, but sniffed out by the Viking defense. They knock him down. This might actually be a loss of one. No gain if they're fortunate. Brings up second and ten. Officially no gain. Again, Pioneers getting their plays from the sideline. They do not huddle. Parsons and Cherry in the backfield. They're going to hand it off to Cherry. No, he Parsons keeps it. They fling it out wide left, but the Vikings are willing to give up the little stuff underneath and are just keeping the... Keeping the Pioneers buttoned up, close to the line of scrimmage. Not letting anyone get behind them. No one's getting deep. Pioneers have had a little success over the middle. But again, they just, they're going to have to dink and dunk their way to the end zone here. The Vikings have gone into a bit of a, uh, what, prevent defense here? Preventing the big play. Don't mind if it's a little one underneath. Parsons dropping back. Seven-step drop. Pressure coming. Gets it away along the sideline. And a flag comes in late. The Vikings do not agree. They humbly disagree with what is sure to be a pass interference call. A lot of contact along the sideline. And the flag comes flying in on the play. Pass was incomplete. Begin. Contact made. See what the call is. This pass interference on the defense. This is Jalen Perkins called for it. And again, he, uh, he and the official are not in agreement on this call. So the Pioneers get a first down, ball right at midfield. They have to 50. Man in motion. 
Coming all the way. Stop short. They fake it out to the flat. Now they give to Cherry. Cherry, though, cannot turn the corner. Tried to go left edge. Couldn't get around. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Pioneers doing what they can. They're trying to institute misdirection. Fakes. But still can't bust anything open. Now Parsons drops back, steps forward, hit as he throws over the middle, had it and dropped it. Oh, man, that's going to hurt. Parsons had to absorb some contact, and his receiver had it in his hands. Couldn't haul it in, though. So Miles Macklin not able to collect. With that, Macklin is going to leave the field. They're going to bring on another receiver, Corey Jones. Freshman. See if they're going to mix things up here and find some luck with the new guy. Oh, boy. Free play. Nope, they're going to blow it dead. There was movement, and I could see this being on either side. Okay, encroachment on the defense. They're going to say that was why the Pioneers jumped. Like I said, this could have gone either way. Fortunate for the Pioneers, not so much for the Vikings. So five yards further along the way for the Pioneers. This takes them into Viking territory. Now second and, no, I'm sorry, third. Third and five for the Pioneer offense. Keeping three in the backfield. They give to Cherry. Cherry makes one miss, has to turn up field, and he's not going to get there. Cherry along the edge is not happening. It's going to bring up fourth down. No gain on that. Fourth and five. The Pioneer offense, though, isn't exactly sprinting off the field. They look like they're going to go for it. See if maybe they can't draw anyone off sides. Get somebody to jump. Yeah, the most penalties in this game have been jumps by the uh, Vikings. A lot on offense. Now on, now on defense. Man goes in motion. Got an empty backfield. Parsons snaps, backpedaling over the middle, has a man, first down. Able to turn up field and hold on to the ball. This is E.J. Rogers with a big catch for the Pioneers, and the drive stays alive. They're able to get the ball down to the 30-yard line. So the Pioneers are threatening here in the third quarter with 7.20 remaining in the third. Pioneers down 17-0. A lot of work to do. A lot of people on the right side of the formation. Looks like they're stacked. They hand it off, trying to work right. Nothing. Nothing on the edge. Ball carried on the play by number zero, Sean Cherry. Cherry again, not able to turn the corner. Second and ten coming up. Empty backfield right now for Parsons. Two on his left, two on his right. He's yelling up at the line, now turns, looks at the bench. Gets the play that they want. And they're going to try and sweep it, but boy, not going to be able to get around. Quickness. Quickness by the defense of the Vikings. They try to sweep with Kolb. And he just went all the way from one end of the field to the other, side to side, and could not find a place to turn. The Vikings were there every step of the way. So that's actually a three-yard loss on that run play. And quickly, the Pioneers at third and 13. And the Pioneers attempted a field goal at the end of the first half. It was blocked. That was the last play of the first half. Parsons, yeesh. Hit as he throws, throwing off his back foot again. Out of bounds at sales. Overshooting everybody. And the Pioneers again look like they're going to stay on for fourth down. So the Pioneers made a few changes coming into the game right now as Taylor. 
Three wide receivers right, one left. Finley in to block. Parsons fires, has a man, but he's going to be short. Looked short when he caught it. Oh, I think that he's. I think they missed this by a yard. Parsons pass is complete to number six, Arlandis Mitchell. Yep. So this got to Mitchell, but it was short. And so that's actually going to be a turnover on downs for the Pioneers. Good throw and catch. Just Pioneers weren't quite across the line to get that first down. So a turnover on downs for the Pioneer offense, heading back out of the Vikings. 5.44 remaining third quarter. Been a quick third quarter so far. And I know there's been uh, some false starts, but other than that, it's been a pretty clean game. And for an early season game, that's a rarity. Usually there's a lot of penalties as the players and the officials or everyone's getting kind of settled in. And hopefully I haven't cursed myself for the rest of this game. Now here's a great run on the right side of the offensive line. That was Avery Gates. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of him coming down to the finish line of this game. As Gates has been a very good runner. Again, running plays keep the clock going. I'm sure Grampy would love to chew up a lot of clock on this possession. Just run it all the way down the field and get another touchdown. Not looking for any signs of life from the Pioneers. And if you're a Viking, that's what you're hoping for. I would imagine. QB under center. He's going to hand it off left side this time. Gates tries to cut it back in. Nothing doing. Knocked down for a minimal gain. Going to bring up third and short. Probably about third and two, I'd say. Pioneers looking for a big hold right here. They're sending in their big nose tackle. Kevin Giffen coming into the game, and he gets right dead center of the, over the ball. He's going to be taking on two or three of their offensive linemen. He's the run stopper. Like I said, third and one officially. Quarterback in the shotgun. Watch the design draw. There it is. Pioneer's got a hand on him, but he gets away. Scampering has a first down and more foot race now. Hopefully they can push him out of bounds. Indeed they do. But a big gain for the Vikings. And Jackson Waring able to come up with a lot of yards. Again, Pioneers are able to get a hand on him, but an arm tackle ain't going to do it. He's big enough and strong enough to get through those. Able to carry the ball all the way down to the Pioneer 39-yard line. And now first and 10, four minutes remaining in the third. Quarterback under center, turns, play action pass. Rolling right, he's got tons of time and space, throws it. And good tackle by the Pioneers, only about a gain of four, five maybe on that play, but the pass is complete to Damon Street. Damon Street, who's been the best wide receiver for Grandview today. I heard the PA announcer say Damon Street. If it's Damon Street, I apologize for saying it wrong this game. Fortunately, we do not get phonetic spelling some names. I have to take a guess. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I am way wrong. Three wide receivers left of the quarterback. One to his right. Empty backfield. He's going to roll. It's an option. He keeps it. Gets the first down. Still moving. Now pushed out of bounds. Jackson, and Waring, not afraid to uh, tuck the ball and run. He has had a very good day on the ground. Let's see. Let's, let's go find it. We've got a second, don't we? Let's go see what he's done on the ground today. Assuming this is pretty up to date on the stat system. Rushing, wearing nine attempts for 61 yards and two touchdowns. His longest being a 29-yard run. That's what I have listed on the stat system right now. So wearing, having a good day on the ground. He's got 107 yards through the air and 61 on the ground. Takes it now. They're going to hand off going right. This is their backup running back, I do believe. This is Vitsum. And what this does right now, what the Vikings are doing quite well, is keeping the clock moving. We're now down to just two minutes here in the third quarter. 
They're in no rush after the play. They huddle, they look to their bench, they talk it out, and then they keep the ball on the ground. The Pioneers just, they're going to have to stop him. <laughs> I can even see a Pioneer player. He's like, come on, let's go. But nope, down to 10 on the play clock. No rush for the Vikings. And now they're not sending out any wide receivers here. This looks like a design run all the way. Vitzum again, right side. Has the first, moving towards the end zone, and is stopped. Stopped in the secondary at around the 11-yard line. Again, still just chewing up that clock. When you're rooting for a team like this, you love this. When you're rooting against them, you hate it. It's one of those things, though. If the Pioneers want this to stop, they got to stop the run. Reminiscent of last year's game, where the run game, especially in the second half, just took over. Here's another run right up the middle. Vitz him again. He's hit, taken down. I think they're going to give him two yards on that. 50 seconds remaining. They can take it almost to the end of the quarter. They'll have to run one more play before we flip the field. seconds remaining so this could be the last play of the quarter and Vitzum has it right side big hit taken down short of the first down marker down to close to the five yard line depending on placement this is going to bring up a third and three situation again this can be the last play of the quarter if they so desire and I believe they do five seconds remaining that's going to do it All right, end of the third. And with that, it is 17-0. The Grandview Vikings on the road have this lead against the Mid-American Nazarene University Pioneers. Like I said, 17-0. We're going to flip the field and start the fourth quarter. Let's go ahead and take a look, Pioneers fans. You know, the Pioneers, they won 24-21 in overtime last week at Langston University in Langston, Oklahoma. Today they're against number three Grandview. Grandview living up to that hype. Next week, they are on the road, September 9th, Saturday. They play at 6 p.m. at Peru State, so they're going to be up in Nebraska next week. Then we are back here at the Olathe District Activity Center, September 16th, versus William Penn. So William Penn, that is a red-out night, so Educators Appreciation Night, but everyone needs to get out here, and if you're coming in person, wear red. Even if you're listening to me at home, wear red anyway. I'll be the guy in the booth that looks like me, and I'll wear red. Got it. All right, so as we've just been told, there's going to be no graphics when you're watching this replay. And again, I know you're going to watch it religiously and with a lot of love. But we will have no graphics on the play for the replay, so I'm going to try and just keep you going here. Like I said, we're starting the fourth quarter. 17 nothing is where we're at right now. Teams ready to break the hustle. Let's go uh, huddle. Let's go ahead and go through the rest of the schedule. We have two back-to-back -back games here in September. So September 16th versus William Penn. That game is the red out. And let's see, do we have a time? That is also at 6 p.m., another evening game. And then the next week, September 23rd, we play at noon. And that is versus Clark. And that's a blackout. So everyone wear black. And that is a youth cheer and football game. And then we go on the road for a few. Going up to Lamonia, Iowa to play Graceland. Then we got to go to Baldwin City, Kansas and play those stinking Baker Wildcats. Boo, Baker, because I can. Two at home versus Central Methodist and Missouri Baptist, but who cares? We're ready to go. Play ready to resume. And I think we're going to have another false start. Boy, if this is on Grandview, they're going to be pulling their hair out. That has been the only weak part of their game tonight has been penalties with the false start on offense. See what the call is. All right, and this again is a false start on Grandview. So this is going to back him up. They were at third and three. Five yards back, third and eight. Still inside the 10-yard line, or at least they're right at the 10, I believe. Yeah, they're at the 10. Pioneers looking for a stop now on third and eight. Dropping back, dropping back, looking, looking. Has a man over the middle. 
Breaks one tackle and into the end zone he goes. And that, stop me if you've heard it before, is Avery Gates. Been having a good day. Not bad. Not bad at all. So the pass this time, not a run, but the pass to Gates. That gets the touchdown. That's going to extend the lead. We're at 23-0, pending the extra point. Oh, wait. Oh, we do have that one. Yeah, flick that one on a little bit for me there. Just a little. Halfway up. Okay, a little. Yep, yeah, perfect. Perfect. Right there. Got to be able to see my roster. Again, we're under the lights, and they turn the lights off in the booth. So the extra point is up. The extra point is good. So 14.56 remains. Again, that was the first play of the fourth quarter. It is now 24 to nothing. The Vikings of Grandview over the Pioneers of Mid-American Nazarene University. So everyone's going to get lined up, and we'll have another kickoff. Pioneers would love to just get a sustained drive right now. That's where they've been struggling. Drives at times have shown flashes, but then stall out. That being a credit to the defense of Grandview, I take nothing away. Their defense has done really well. Uh, the run game for the Pioneers just has not been able to get going. Cherry having a rough night trying to run it. Cannot get the edge. He's at nine attempts for just 20 yards. And then Finley, he's got four attempts for nine yards. Bryant, one for four. Cole, two for six. And then Parsons, just due to being sacked, who has been sacked. Let's see how many times they have. They have him sacked it five times now is at minus 23 yards due to all those sacks. So Pioneers got some stuff to work on this week. Protection being one of them. Run block being another. Defense hasn't played bad. And you look at 24 nil, you're thinking, eh, that ain't great. And it's not great, but I wouldn't say they played bad. And the kick is on its way. Pioneers are going to be able to field it, but it's dropped, rolls out of bounds. So the Pioneers aren't going to start with great field position as that's going to be placed around the 17-yard line. And that ball, it got really high, had some backspin on it, just kind of died on its way to the receiver. So he had to really come up on it. He was only able to get, like, a hand on it, but couldn't pull it in. Hits the deck, out of bounds it goes. Anywho, long story short, trying to make it sound real interesting on a kickoff which it's not. Parsons in the shotgun, trying to get something going here for the Pioneer offense. Low snap, handled. Have a man out of the backfield. Great pass. Good run. They bump into an official, but this was Finley. Finley never even acted like he was going to go into the flat. He never acted like he was going to run block. Never acted like he was going to do anything, anything except head directly upfield. And Parsons quickly Able to whip it out to him, and there he went. So great play by the Pioneers. They get it close to midfield. Man in motion. Stop short. They're going to give it to Finley. Finley trying to get the edge. This time he does. Well, it does ish. And that's going to be minimal gain. Maybe three on that play. Pioneers trying to mix it up. You know, Cherry couldn't quite get the edge, but Finley is trying. I mean, yeah, everyone was trying. Almost had it. Ball at the 49-yard line, second and seven. Here comes his man in motion around the formation. Parsons fakes it to Finley, play action pass, looking, looking, flings it out. Man fell down, the defender did, so the Pioneers are going to get a first down after this. Or at this, there we go. Uh, oops, sorry, I saw a little extracurricular activity after the play. No, no flag thrown, nothing, nothing doing there. So Himes. With the catch on that, and again, when the defender slipped, that allowed Himes to turn up field and come up with some extra yardage. So the Pioneers well in Viking territory. Best drive in a while. Probably shouldn't have said that. Parsons out wide, Himes again. And Himes is swung out of bounds. Close to the first down marker. They're going to be maybe three short. Pioneers showing a little urgency here. They're, they're moving a little quicker. Three wide receivers to the right, one to the left. Finley remains in the backfield with Parsons. And they're going to fake it to Finley, and boy, howdy. Oh! 
That's not good. There's a flag on the play. Uh, sack on the play. And we're going to see everything that happens after that. The defensive lineman might have been a little overzealous on wrestling Parsons to the ground. We'll see what the officials think about that situation. This is Gabriel Jacone Duffy is going to be the player in question. He is a defensive end, 6'4", 245. And just for comparison, Parsons is 6'2", 170. And was flung to the deck with uh, a little aggression. Again, the officials, all the, all the officials are now coming together to talk this over. Again, a flag was thrown on the far side. So we'll see if they're going to pick that up, if this is going to be due to the tackle on the play, if it's going to be due to the Pioneers doing a little shoving after the fact. Let's see what the call is. Here it comes. It looks like this is going to be on the defense. Okay, so personal foul, roughing the passer. That's 15-yard penalty. So that's going to move the Pioneers way down the field. And going to definitely give them a fresh set of downs. And Gabriel Jacone Duffy was flagged for that. He had him wrapped up. Probably best just to hold him there until they blow the whistle. And I, you know what? I'll give Duffy this credit. That whistle came late. Like they, they needed to blow that a little earlier to make sure no one got thrown to the deck. The play was over. Parsons was wrapped up like nothing was doing on that. I would have blown that whistle just a hair earlier to avoid the, the slam to the deck. But the officials also did not ask me. Not even a little bit. So we'll see if they give the Pioneers any life. They're a little closer, maybe within field goal range. See if they can get off the schneid here. Parsons dancing. He's going to step forward. Still stepping forward. Tucks, runs, slides down close to the first down marker. We'll see just how close he was. Good scramble by Parsons. Oh, boy, they didn't give him much on that at all. I thought he got a lot closer to the first down marker. Apparently I was wrong. Do you think that spot was a little odd? Okay, my producer's with me. That, that, Really felt from where we were at like he was closer, but it was also pretty far away. So Parsons going to give to Finley now. Finley trying to turn the corner on the right. Bangs forward for a few. See how many they're going to give him here. One, maybe two. Nothing. Wow, the far stick didn't even move. Okay, so I guess third and seven coming up. Oh, they gave him one. Third and six. Here we go. Pioneers desperately needing this first down. Putting something in the end zone would be huge right now. Whistle's being blown. Timeout called by MNU. They want to talk this over. Realizing this is a pretty big down right here with third and six. Ball on the 13-yard line. 12.04 remaining here in the fourth quarter of action. Again, you got that personal foul. You got the, the roughing the passer penalty. So that got you a lot of distance getting you close. Just would love to get something on the board here at 24 0 in the fourth quarter. Taking a look at the Pioneer offense, Parsons, he is 20 for 30 for 201 yards through the air, as long as being 28, but sacked five times. Definitely worth noting. And then Parsons rushing. <laughs> he only got three on that carry, so he's still at minus 20 rushing, but you know, I, th I thought that three was unfair. Cherry, nine attempts for 20 yards. Finley trying to come on here. He's at six attempts for 13. Receiving, the Pioneers are spreading it all over the yard, though. As Mitchell has four for 40. Finley, two for 40. Rogers, four for 38. Himes, three for 34. Let's see, Menifee, three for 26. Fighting, two for 14. Cherry, one for five. Mouser, one for four. So, again, a lot of different receivers for the Pioneers as they're trying to find find the hot hand out there, someone who can catch it and advance the ball further down the field. Here we go. Third and six. Here we go. Ball on the 13. Parsons, empty backfield, drops back, steps forward. Player coming, flings it sidearm, and he's... Nope, that's no flag. I know, the, I know everyone wants it, but nope, no flag on that play. So the ball is incomplete on third and six. There was contact between the defensive back and the wide receiver after the ball had already passed, and 
again. There. Good no call. Good no call. We'll just leave it there. I don't need to break it down further. All right, so fourth and six. Pioneer offense stays on the field. Big fourth and six happening right here. Finley and Parsons in the backfield. Three to the left, one to the right. Watch the corner blitz from the top. Doesn't happen. Parsons looking left, looking left. Throws left. Intercepted at the goal line. I don't know where he was going with that because there was not a Pioneer even remotely close to that situation. Pioneers trying to chase him down. Good return by the interception. Uh, ball taken past midfield up to about the 45-yard line. And that is where the Grandview offense will take over. And we don't have the luxury this week of instant replay with all the technical difficulties we've been having. So I'd love to see how that play broke down, but it broke down quickly. So Mitchell credited for a tackle, which, you know, always fun when you're a wide receiver. Ball placed on the 46-yard line with 11.45 remaining, first and 10 for the Vikings of Grandview. Another thing, if you guys watch this on replay, for the folks from Grandview, here locally we have a city named Grandview. Maybe I don't put the emphasis right. I've told you guys are Grand view but i try not to put too long of a pause sometimes i melt it together because here in town we just say grandview so if i'm saying that wrong again my apologies no offense intended you would think after eight years of calling football i might get it right but no probably not so run by grandview the vikings as they are just keeping the keeping the clock going second and seven coming up Again, 24 nothing in favor of the Vikings. Ranked number three here at the start of the season, their first game. So they are still no wins, no losses, but well on their way to a 1-0 record. Quarterback under center. Snaps the ball. They're going to hand it off inside. Pioneer defense equal to the task on this one. Well done by the Pioneer D. They're able to sniff that play out, bring him down behind the line. Marcos Flores with the tackle. Came bursting through the line and knocked him down in the backfield. Officially a loss of one on the play. Third and 11 now facing the Viking offense. So the Vikings kind of going with a, a stacked jumbo formation here. They're not sending anybody out wide. They're just keeping everyone along the lines. Now they go out from the line of scrimmage. Throw it over the middle. They missed him. Ooh, boy. A rare miss by the quarterback. He had a man, had him open. And Waring just missed him. Incomplete pass. Fourth and 11. Here comes the punt unit for the Vikings. Special teams unit coming on for the Pioneers. Waring, you know he wants that one back. He said he hasn't missed much today. So fourth and 11, ball on the 47-yard line. So a little pooch kick coming if they don't fake it by Grandview. Again, not much hurt if you try and go for that first down. And I could definitely see that here on this part of the field. Good snap, rolling right, looking, looking. Now sent away. Low line drive. Going to take a bounce by the Pioneers and field it. Able to make two miss and now moving up the sideline. Now pushed out of bounds. Good return by the Pioneers. Dangerous play as that ball could have gotten knocked out when he reached out. There was a defender right there, but couldn't let the ball keep rolling or otherwise probably would have been downed near the goal line. So Finley, smart on the return, secure with the hands, able to move the ball forward. Pioneers offense is going to start the ball with 35 at the 35-yard line with 10.09 remaining in the game, 24-0. Pioneers have it. Fake the handoff. Dialing long distance right along the sideline. And yeah, pass was too high. Out of bounds at sales. Mitchell not able to come up with the completion. Yeah, there was a lot of contact over there, but I don't think that ball was ever catchable. It was, it was way up there. Second and 10 for the Pioneers. Freshman wide receiver still in there. See if they can get him some experience. Finley has it. Able to break through the first line, but not the second. Taken down by the linebackers. And so positive yards, not enough for the first. Going to bring up third and four.
Pioneers need, need to convert this first down. Clock still ticking. They fake it. Parsons slings it out, has his man, bobbled it, but able to hold on, comes down with it. That's going to be a first down by Yard. And let's see here. That is Himes. Himes again. He's having a good day. He's showing up big on those big downs. Again, Himes, he bobbled it. Even got hit while he was bobbling it, but able to pull it in. First down, Pioneers. Ball near midfield. Parsons drops back all alone. Finley went out. They don't go to Finley, though. Able to hit another wide receiver. Made one miss. Ooh, but not the second. Great tackle in the open field. But E.J. Rogers able to come up with positive yards. Getting closer to the first down marker. Pioneers still trying to get something going here. In Viking territory. Ball at the 45-yard line. Second and three coming up. Parsons standing directly on midfield. Slings it out wide. Ooh. Knew the contact was coming, but had enough for the first down. So just retreating to his derriere was E.J. Rogers. Not going to take the hit, not going to do anything silly, and not going to drop that ball. So Rogers, he's going to head off the field and get a breather. That's a first down for the Pioneers. And that's good for a Pioneer first down. Ball now at the 39-yard line, first and 10. Clock still ticking, eight minutes remaining. Parsons fakes a hands off, handoff, has his man. And near the sticks again. Pioneers getting something going here. That's freshman Corey Jones with the completion. Nine-yard gain. So Perkins credited with the tackle for the Vikings. Second and one. And Cherry runs it up the middle. This time, going between the tackles, he's able to come up the first down. Didn't try and get the edge this time. I like it. So the ball taken all the way down to the 25-yard line. And that's good for a Pioneer first down. Parsons and Cherry remain in the backfield. Man in motion. They give it to him for the sweep. Trying to turn up field. Nowhere to go. It's too fast. Too fast are the Vikings. Pioneer's not able to get any of these sweeps going. They're not even hardly able to get the edge at times. Kolb. Hands on his hips. I know he's not thrilled with getting annihilated by three Vikings. Second and ten. No gain on that play. Ooh, Pioneers able to find their man underneath. This is Himes. He's got enough for the first down. Pioneers are inside the 15-yard line now. Ball going to be placed on the, I think on the 10. Nope. Backed it up a little bit. Pa let's see. Ball on the 13-yard line. 13-yard line first down for the Pioneers. 6-10 remains in the game. Can the Pioneers get something in? Can they get on the board here in the late stages of the ball game? Parsons to Cherry. Cherry wrapped up. That stutter step did nothing. Absolutely nothing there. I know he was looking for a hole, hoping something would open up, and nothing did. Ball carried on the play by number zero, Sean Cherry. A lot of hands on the hips by the Pioneers. They're getting tired on this drive, but and ten from the still got to try and get this into the end zone. Got to get on the board. Best drive of the day so far for the Pioneers, though. They have this has been a long, sustained drive. They're they're moving the ball well. Got to keep it going, though. Parsons looking in the end zone has a man, big hit. But I believe he held on. I do believe that was a catch amongst all that traffic. So Himes, we think, got that. It was hard to tell. A lot of traffic there. Cherry trying to get the edge. Oh, he finally does, but then a flag on the play. So imagine this is coming back for the Pioneers. Ah, bummer. Cherry was knocked down just a couple yards short of the goal line. But with the flag, probably going to march this backwards. Yep. 
Holding on the offense. This on Corey Jones, wide receiver, who's, who's trying to get that edge locked up for Cherry. So now third and 11 for the Pioneers. Yep, third and 12, sorry. That yard might make all the difference. Parson drops back over the middle again. That one was knocked down at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. It's gonna bring up fourth down. Decision time for the Pioneers. Will you take anything and go with the field goal? Or do you want to put it in for six? To me, it looks like they are electing to put this in, try and put it in for six. They can get a first down before scoring if they can get past the four yard line. Fourth and 12. Pioneers snap, step up in the pocket, going for the end zone. They got it. Himes, touchdown. Parsons to Himes, touchdown. Pioneers. So a very bold fourth down decision pays off huge for the Pioneer offense. A great pass over the middle from Parsons to Himes and a touchdown for him and you. Pioneers electing for the extra point after that touchdown. And again, hopefully it's going to get it up to 24 to 7. But we'll take it. Positive steps for the Pioneer offense. Down to five on the play clock. There we go. Oh, they were going to try the fake, and it's blown dead. Oh, ho, ho, ho. sadness abounds. Must be a false start. Someone got a little jumpy. Indeed, they did. So now we're going to back this up. And I don't think the I don't think the Pioneers are going to try that one a second time. So they might just line up and hopefully get this extra point. Oh, isn't that the luck sometimes? And I'm not going to venture a guess if they was going to succeed or not, but they were trying. And there we go. The kick is up. And the kick is good. So with the extra point, that is now making it 24-7. Grandview Vikings on top of the Mid-American Nazarene University Pioneers in 24-7 with 4-41 remaining in the ball game. And a... Bit of a positive for the Pioneers, and we will definitely take that against the number three ranked Grandview Vikings. This uh, Parson to Himes thing, that, that might be legit this year. Worth watching. Keep an eye on it. They connected quite a few times today. Let me see if the stats have updated. We'll see what they've done. Oh, where, where do they put my, my game stats? There they are. All right, have we refreshed? Indeed we have. So right now, Himes, seven receptions for 71 yards and one touchdown, his longest being 27. So he's averaging 11 yards per reception. It's a pretty good day. Parsons now is up 27 to for 41. One interception, one touchdown, his longest being a 28-yard completion. He's thrown for 267 yards. Pioneers right now look like they're going to go for an onside kick. Indeed they do. Kick too hard, though, taken by the up man, and he will be down at the 41-yard line. Pioneers were hoping to bounce it off of someone. Didn't work. So the Vikings will have pretty good field position when they get their drive going here with 440 remaining in the ballgame. So let's see where else we go. On the ground... Cherry's got 11 receptions. Do we have a flag down? Oh, there's a flag on the play. All right, let's see what happens. Probably a whole bunch of nothing. There is a flag on the play. Many an official in the middle of the field talking this over. And the head official, I believe he has his call. He's ready to make it. Okay, his mic was cutting out. I'm not sure what that was, but it was on Grandview. Is he trying to? Yeah, I don't know what that call was. That was a very strange signal he made there. Huh, 
Anywho, apparently I need to reread my official's handbook and relearn whatever that call is. But that is going to knock Grandview back a little bit. They're going to start on the 27-yard line for this drive. Quarterback under center. Turns, hands it off. A little bit of a cut inside. Met by the linebackers. Knocked down for minimal gain. And I think we all know what's going to happen on this drive. There's going to be a whole lot of running. And no rush by Grandview. They sell 30 seconds on their play clock. He can take this down under four minutes remaining in the ball game before they even snap this ball again. Pioneers are going to need a stop, and they're going to need it immediately. With the way this offense is moving, say even one first down is potentially game ending, although the Pioneers do still have two timeouts in this ball game. Going into the shotgun now, the Pioneers are showing blitz, and they're going to send them on a run blitz, and they've got them right at the line. Maybe a gain of one here. Clock still ticking at 3.45 remaining. Marcos Flores. Flores with the tackle. Ball placed at the 32-yard line. 3.35 remains. Second and five. Grandview breaking the huddle. Still with 15 on their play clock. See if they try and milk this and get anyone drawn off sides. Ooh, Pioneers almost jumped. There we go. Now he turns, looks away, looks back directly at the clock. Now knows what's left. Five, four, three, two, one. They get it away at one. Drops back. Design keeper. He's going to have the first down. And more. Tries to cut it in and takes a hit. Boy. Might have been better to either get down or get out of bounds, but he has not shied away from contact yet this game. Has Waring. So Jackson Waring, big carry there. Two forty-five remaining. I said a first down might be the game first ender. Down. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, Waring just staring at the clock, not even in the huddle. Not going to call the play until ten, and now they're going to hustle to the line. They're taking this down to all zeros as much as they can. Three, two, one. Snaps at one. Big hit. Spins. Falls forward. Not enough for the first down. But close, ball's going to be eh, three yards short of the first down marker, bringing up second and three. Tyler Vitzum, the ball carrier. So Vitzum with that ball carry. Second and three. And now two minutes remaining in the ball game. I mean, Grand View with three timeouts, Pioneers with two. Doesn't look like either side is all that interested in using their timeouts. Just getting this to the end of the game, hopefully avoid any injuries. No word up here on Sal. Hopefully he's all right and will be ready to go by next week. Again, the Pioneers on the road next week. And that's going to be right at the first down marker. Marked a yard short. Minute and a half remains. They can now get this down under one minute left in the ball game before snapping on third and one. Tyler Bitsum, the ball carrier. Tackery quarterback number 27. So Martinez credited with the tackle. 20 seconds on the play clock, a minute 10 left in the game. Vikings now break with 13 left. I formation, and here is another jump by the offensive line of the Vikings. Yeah, not that that's going to affect the uh, final outcome of the game, but you know they're going to be trying to tighten that up this week. There's a little animation amongst each other on the offensive line. They're not they're not pleased with each other right now. But with that, the clock stops with 57 seconds remaining. What went from third and one now is going to be third and six. Change being made for the Pioneers now with not such a short distance to go. And now the counter. So they said the clock will start on the snap in third and six. 57 seconds remaining. 
Pioneers get a stop here. You imagine a timeout will be coming just to get the ball back one more time, see if they can't do anything. Oh, boy, two missed tackles. But they do get the stop. Will they use the timeout? Not as of yet. Going to bring up fourth down. Tyler Bitts on the ball carrier. So the ball's going to have to be snapped one more time. So on fourth down, again, the Pioneers elected not to stop the clock. The special teams unit now coming on for Grandview. And the Pioneers are going to need to hustle on their punt unit. Ten seconds remaining on the play clock. I got to snap this quickly. And they get it off, send it away. Finley back to receive. Bouncing, bouncing. Will it get to the end zone? Indeed it does. So the clock is now stopped with two seconds. Two seconds remaining in this ball game. And we're just going to be one, uh, what I assume is a kneel down away from being finished. Hopefully these stats are right. Hmm. Doesn't look like the stats have refreshed since 4.41 left in the fourth quarter. That's not good. Nope, they sure haven't. Jeez Louise. Pioneers are going to take one shot here. And just a run off the left side. Finley cuts it back to the right. Still moving up the middle. And wrestled down, and that's going to do it. A little pushing and shoving as that was a pretty... Rough tackle here at the end of the game, but I'm sure cooler heads will prevail, and that is going to be the end of that. The final score for this game, 24-7. The visitors from Grandview, the Vikings, coming away with the victory. They now improved to 1-0 on this young season. The Pioneers dropped the loss, so they are now 1-1 one one at an even 500, as we're really just getting going at the start of the year. Everyone enjoy. I'm sorry, our stats. Oh, wait, no, it just updated. I can give you our stats. All right, Adrian Parsons for the Pioneers. It's 27 for 41. One interception, one touchdown. Threw for 267 yards. Leading the way for receptions was Hines. He had seven receptions for 78 yards, one touchdown. Then on the ground, Cherry had 11 carries for 23 yards. Over on the other side for the Vikings of Grandview, Waring, he went 11 for 19 for 117 yards and a touchdown. Let's see, his wide receiver core, let's see, it wasn't Simpson, they had that wrong down there. It was, oh, it was Gates. No, not Gates. Let's see, this was all messed up. Oh, actually, Waring, he took the lead on rushing yards. 11 rushes for 78 yards. And so, they have their own broadcast. People can go listen to them, right? So, that's going to do it here from the Olathe District Activity Center. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll be back in two weeks at 6 o'clock p.m. for the next Pioneer home game. Everyone have a great holiday weekend. Have a happy Labor Day, and we'll see you in two weeks. Good night, everybody. Against William Penn, Saturday, September 16th at 6 p.m. Please direct your attention down to the field and join our football team as we sing the alma mater.
Thank you for supporting MU Athletics and Pioneer Football. Drive safe. And we'll see you soon.